welcome back. Uh, so, you, we in the last lecture, we were trying to see that uh, if we consider f minus s and f, uh, then how this is going to behave with any other trigonometric polynomial uh, of degree less or equal to n. Then by writing it out, we have found that f minus f s and f f inner product, this is 1 by 2 pi uh, minus pi to pi f of x and then this is p x bar dx minus uh, because s and f is f hat of n e to the power n x, this is a finite sum. So, we pull, pull out both the sums, then we have got f hat of n alpha k bar minus pi to pi e to the power i n x into e to the power minus i k x. This also we take this out mod k less or equal to n and then alpha k bar is scalar we get that out minus pi to pi f of x e to the power minus of i k x dx this is nothing but f hat of k and here 1 by 2 pi and uh, then this if n is not equal to k by the orthogonality of this, this is going to be equal to 0. So, now out of these two sums, this uh, integral is going to survive only when k is equal to n. So, when k is equal to n, this becomes 1. So, minus pi to pi integral is 2 pi. So, 1 by 2 pi gets cancelled. So, what we can here get is uh, summation over mod k less or equal to n, this alpha k bar and then f hat of k because n equal to k, this is going to survive. Now, this 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi f of x e to the power minus i k x, this is nothing but f hat of k. So, this is less or equal to n alpha k bar f hat of at k minus so this is very important for us because now f minus of sn f is orthogonal to every trigonometric polynomial of degree less or equal to n so in other words we will just rewrite it is orthogonal to p where p is a trigonometric polynomial of degree less or equal to n. Okay. So, now when we have the notion of orthogonality, then the first thing comes to mind is to ask whether something like analog to Pythagoras theorem is true or not. So, as a matter of fact, what we can see that this Pythagoras theorem let f is orthogonal to g, then norm of f plus g square, this is equal to norm of f square plus norm of g square. So, if they are orthogonal, then this square is equal to this square plus this square because this is going to be the addition of this and this. Okay. So, we will start with the left hand side f plus g square, this by definition, by definition this is f of plus g inner product of f of, by the linearity of the inner product, we just take f f 
plus f g plus g f plus g g. Now this is simply is norm of f square plus norm of g square. Okay, so everything fits in whatever we have learned in our Euclidean uh, setting and the inner product uh, in linear algebra. So, in this space is a cube with an inner product which is given by this. So, now one of the, uh, uh, so our aim is to look for that norm of m f minus of s and f this goes to 0. This is what we are going to prove this. So, now, so this what uh, you can see that if we are saying that the norm is essentially some distance, then this is uh, S and F itself is a trigonometric polynomial. Now, my F is a function. So, now I am trying to get the distance between F and S and F. So, in other words, I, I can ask that uh, is it this distance is it comparable to the distance uh, between f and any other trigonometric polynomial of degree less or equal to n. So, that is what is uh, our main observation. So, this is a proposition let p be a trigonometric polynomial of degree less or equal to equal to n then norm of f minus of s n f norm is lesser equal to norm of f minus p. So, in other words what this says is that the s n f is the closest is a trigonometric polynomial of degree n uh, which is closest to f geometrically. So, and this is, uh, so now we will prove this. Now, let us look at norm of f minus p, let p of x, this is equal to summation over more than lesser equal to n alpha n e to the power i n x. That is how the p is going to be looked like and some of degree lesser equal to n. So, now this is equal to what I can do is that this I will write f minus of s n f plus s n f minus p to norm. Now, look at what is our s n f. s n f is a trigonometric polynomial of degree n Now, S n f minus of p is equal to summation over mod n lesser equal to n f hat of n minus of alpha n e to the power i n x. So, this let me call this as q x. Now, S n f minus p, this is again a trigonometric polynomial of degree less or equal to n. Therefore, this is going to be, so this again let me rewrite S n of f plus q. 
As we have seen here uh, previously that f minus of s and f is perpendicular to q. Therefore, by Pythagoras theorem, this both square is both the side. So, this is f minus of s and f plus and norm of q is a non-negative quantity. So, norm of f minus p square this is equal to norm of f minus of s and f square plus a non-negative quantity. This will imply that So, in other words, that is what we have proved that uh, in the language of the approximation, this uh, S and F is among all the trigonometric polynomial of degree less or equal to n, uh, S and F is closest to F in terms of this norm. Okay. So, now, we are uh, ready to prove uh, the main theorem. So, which is that let then one norm of f minus of s and f 2 norm this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. In other words what we are saying the partial sum converges to f in the mean square. So, and secondly we will get that norm of f 2 norm is equal to summation over n varies over z mod of f hat of n square whole to the power 1 over 2. So, which means uh, in terms of the norm of f we can completely capture if we know f hat of n, we can completely capture through this the norm of f. So, this is uh, uh, this is the so called little l 2 norm, but we are not going to talk uh, in the abstract setting, but this is this is known as the perceivable identity. and which is one of the cornerstone of, of the Fourier series. Uh, this is uh, very satisfying and one of the most fundamental and important result in Fourier series. Okay, so, So, what do we know about uh, the trigonometric polynomial and vis-a-vis -vis the role of uh, f? So, when we proved the Fayer's theorem, there we have seen that uh, if f is a continuous function, then uh, uh, f can be approximated uniformly by a trigonometric polynomial. So, in other words from Fair's theorem, we know that if f is a continuous function, 2 pi periodic function, 
then for every epsilon positive there exists a trigonometric polynomial p such that norm of f minus p infinity which is equal to supremum of x belongs to minus pi to pi mod of f of x minus of p of x this is less than epsilon this is what because just think about that f convolution of the fair kernel that is going to be a continuous function and it is a trigonometric polynomial which approximate f uniformly. Okay. And now let us look at the what here I am defining. So, so now suppose f is in Riemann integrable observe. if f is Riemann integrable minus pi to pi then to norm this square this is equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi mod of f of x square dx now, if I pull out the supremum of f from the integral, then this is going to be lesser equal to f infinity 1 by 2 pi into 2 pi, which is equal to 1. So, this is square. If I am pulling it out, then the square term is going to get pulled out. So, therefore, what we have got is that norm of f 2 norm is lesser equal to norm of f of infinity norm. Thus, here what we have for this particular p, this is also again less than epsilon because it is going to be dominated by the sup norm. Okay. Now, so now let us assume let the degree of this p is equal to m. So, therefore, uh, if I choose in my S n, if n is greater or equal to m, then p is a trigonometric polynomial whose degree is lesser equal to n. Therefore, what we have found in our earlier observation in the proposition S n of f 2 norm is lesser or equal to norm of f minus p 2 norm and which is again lesser or equal to norm of f minus of p of supremum. This is less than epsilon by the fair theorem. So, by proving that S n f is the closest trigonometric polynomial in from all trigonometric polynomial of degree lesser equal to n, we have arrived that f minus of uh, S n, this will imply what f minus of S n of f to norm this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Okay. So, now let us come to proof the second part. So, we would like to prove that norm of f 2 square is nothing but summation over mod of f hat of n square. So, for that let us uh, look at uh, norm of f square this is equal to f minus of s n of f plus s n f square. Okay. S n f is also a trigonometric polynomial of degree n. Therefore, by Pythagoras theorem, we have f minus of S n f square plus norm of S n f square. 
Now, as we can see that uh, norm of f 2 is equal to limit n goes to infinity norm of s n f square, because already you have proved that f s n f converges to f in the mean square in the 2 norm. Therefore, this happens. So, let us just calculate what is our s n f 2 square. This is by definition s n f s n f. So, writing down this is minus pi to pi summation over mod n lesser equal to n f hat of n e to the power i n x into summation over mod k lesser equal to n uh, f hat of k bar e to the power minus of i k x d x which is all these are finite sum. So, we will pull this mod of n lesser equal to n then this sum mod of k lesser equal to n f hat at n f hat at k bar 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi e to the power i n minus k of x dx. So, now the orthonormality of e to the power i n x tells us that this k sum is going to survive only when k is equal to n otherwise this is not going to survive they will be kill they are orthogonal pairwise wise orthogonal. So, this is this amounts to now k is equal to n means this is f at of n f at of n bar. So, this is mod of f at of n square. So, now hence this the limit is going to be and this is uh, mm, uh, this is a monotonically increasing sequence which is bounded above therefore, the limit is going to exist and this limit is nothing but going to be norm of f thus. So, this is one of the most important result in this subject. Okay, so, we can easily once uh, you have this then uh, as you can see that here we have assumed only f is Riemann integrable hence f is a bounded function and uh, so on and so forth. But this there is a technicality. So, here we have proved this. So, if we go back to the other one uh, in even in the first case we have proved that if f is a continuous function then f minus of s and f this uh, goes to 0 in the norm. Now, if f is uh, not a continuous function we know that there exists a sequence of continuous function which converges to the Riemann integrable function f in the square norm. So, because it converges uniformly hence the square norm is dominated by this. So, uh, sorry uh, it converge as we have seen that this is going just as you can see uh, the way we have proved that there exists a sequence of continuous function which converges to f in under the integral sign exactly by following the same argument we can say that if f is Riemann integrable then there exists a sequence of continuous functions as f n such that f n minus of f 2 norm is lesser equal to uh, a is go, goes to 0. So, what I am saying if f is Riemann integrable then there exists a sequence f n of continuous function such that uh, 
as n goes to infinity. So, once we have this, then with the standard argument we have, we can prove this result for f is a Riemann integrable function. So, now let us see the corollary, some of the interesting corollary of this, it has many application. So, one trivial corollary is that when we are saying that f uh, without getting, we can get this, because if f is Riemann integrable, we know that summation over n varies over z mod of f at of n square, this is finite which is equal to uh, norm of f which is a finite number. So, hence uh, now this is a con f at of n square is a convergent series therefore, the nth term will go to 0 that is Riemann Lebesgue lemma. This is another way to prove the Riemann Lebesgue lemma. And uh, now, let us uh, ask ourselves what we have seen is that if f is twice differentiable, then f hat of n is uh, mod of f hat of n is lesser equal to some constants by mod n square. And uh, so, hence the Fourier series converges, and by the fair theorem, it because it is converging absolutely. So, it is going to converge even point wise to f of x. Now, if f is in, if f is in C 1, what we have noticed is lesser equal to some constant by mod n for n not equal to 0 for large n. So, now it is natural to ask that uh, if f is c 1, then can we conclude that the partial sum converges to f everywhere point wise. Certainly, this decay condition is not going to give us the convergence, because we know that 1 by n series it does not converge. Now, this question we will address in the next lecture, uh, and we will see that if f is in C 1, that means f prime exists. And uh, f prime is continuous, then what we are going to get is that the Fourier series converges. That is what we will prove in the next lecture. Thank you.